Hi, I'm Adam. And I'm Grant. Welcome to another edition of Roller Die, the place for all things tabletop. Today we're going to take a look at the Quacks of Quedlinburg, the new game by Wolfgang Warsh. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, Wolfgang is a developer who's hit a bunch of recent hits. He's got Twice as Clever, Taverns of Tiefenthal, and of course, The Mind. Oh, uh, The Mind. I, I love The Mind. I love Twice as Clever. Um, Twice as Clever is the roll and write. If you haven't had the chance to play it yet, you should definitely look it up. The Mind is everywhere at conventions. He's bringing us some excellent games. And this is brought to us in the U.S. by North Star Games. They're distributing it here. So, Quacks of Quedlinburg is a bag-building, push-your-luck game. The bag-building comes in as you're trying to brew this potion in your cauldron. You're buying ingredients and putting them into your bag. Then you're drawing blind and adding them along this track. There's the push-your-luck mechanic because you're trying to add the ingredients and not hit too many of these white chips. And with that push-your-luck mechanic, you are given these white chips that you have to draw out of your bag. And you're trying to draw colored chips, you're trying to avoid the white chips. Mm -hmm. As the white chips come out, um, they get you closer to that s over seven, because um, eight is greater than seven, you hit the number eight, and your potion explodes in your face, and... And that's gonna happen. <laughs> you, and you can't avoid it. it. There's there's just, there's no way of avoiding this during the game, but it's okay. There's yeah. an excellent catch-up mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's going to explode. <laughs> and everybody will explode. Um, so don't worry about that, but try and get as far down the track as you mm -hmm. can. If you're the one that doesn't explode and you decide to stop at just the right moment, there are some great um, benefits to that. It's like a good game of blackjack. You have to decide when to take that one more hit or when to stand on what you have. So now we're going to take a look at how this plays. We're going to show you just an overview of the gameplay and we'll come back and give you our final thoughts on the Quacks of Quedlinburg. Okay, for Quacks of Quedlinburg, we're going to skip the setup of the game and jump right to the heart of it. And that is this bubbling cauldron that is before you. This is your player board. This is where you're going to be adding your tokens that you purchase throughout the game. And you spend them along this spiral path here to try to get more points, more victory points, and income so that you can buy more ingredients for your bag. As we said in our opening, this is a push your luck bag building game. So the focus is definitely on getting these ingredients that you want to get into your cauldron. The player board also gives you some other stuff to store your equipment and your chits. For instance here, this bag will hold my rubies. This little bowl holds my rat tail. And we'll explain what the rat tails do when we show you the scoring track. And then I have a place for my neutralizer potion. This neutralizer potion, you can spend it, turn it to the blank side, and get the benefit of removing your most recent white chip. Now the white chips in this game are what cause your potions to explode, which is the bad result. You have this set up in your bag, so you'll start with seven white chips and they have varying values. If your chips ever exceed the value of seven, which means you hit eight in terms of what's placed on your board, your potion will explode and you'll suffer penalties in the scoring round. Now you're gonna be playing over nine rounds. Let's be honest, some of your potions are gonna explode. I've never played a game where someone's been perfect through all nine rounds. Everybody explodes, it's part of the fun of the game. So the way the game works is that you're gonna reach into your bag here and draw out one of your tokens. This is a white chip with a value of two. So I go two away from my starting square and place it. Now I'm also two points closer to that eight that I'm trying to avoid so that I don't explode. Reaching in again, go for another token. Fortunately, it's another white chip. So again, I'm getting closer to that pressure level but at the same time, I'm also getting more points as I'm moving away. Here's a two red. These colors matter, and you'll want to look at the little booklets that we're gonna show you in the next segment that explains what the particular power of that color is in any given scenario. There's a number included in the box, so it always adds a lot of variance to the game, but for purposes of this demonstration, we're just adding them for a little bit of color. But in your real game, this red would have a very specific effect whenever you played it on your board. And here's a four. This is always a good one to get. Let's me jump four away. And as you can see, I'm getting further out, which let me get more income for buying more ingredients and more victory points. 
green. Again, that would have a different effect based on whatever booklet you chose for your game. And a three white. So now I am at six. This is a dangerous position to be in because there's a two chip in here, which would cause me to explode. So I have to do the mental math. I can reach in, I can't look in my bag, but I can reach in and feel how many are left and sort of do the mental gymnastics of, I can probably pull another chip and not hit it. So let's see. All right, and that chip will take me to seven. This is more than likely where you would stop playing because you were at the absolute threshold of what chips you could play. There's more bad chips left in my bag than good. The chances are that I would explode on the next chip. And the reason I want to stop here is because I don't want to suffer these penalties. And maybe I'm furthest along the track and I want to roll that die. So that's the point of the game. You see how far you can go before you just have to call it off and try not to explode. In the next segment, as we mentioned, we're gonna look at the booklets here so you can kind of get an idea of what powers that these chips with the different colors have. Okay, now we're gonna jump into what we can only describe, pun intended, as the key ingredients of Quacks of Quedlinburg. And these are the ingredient tokens. These are the chips that you're buying to put in your bag and pull out to fill your potions with. These are what drive the game. And the really neat thing about what you get in the box, these booklets tell you how the chip behaves in your current game, but they're all double-sided and you get multiple booklets giving you a ton of variability in this game. Because however you set up these booklets with whatever facing is how the chip behaves. So this yellow chip is gonna behave completely different in the next game you play. For instance, in this game, it's a nice little vacuum chip because if you happen to play it after a white chip, you would place it down and pull up the white chip that was right behind it, letting you go further in the game as you're cleaning up these white chips that are potentially bad. They're the things that are gonna cause you to blow up. If we take a look at his other side here, if you play with this version, he's a multiplier. Whatever chip you place next, not counting a white, gets multiplied by two. So you can see how differently this would behave. The only chips that are stay the same are the pumpkin chips. There's no variability to them. They're always just the low cost bag filler when you don't have much more money to spend. But the colors also do behave differently. The black, purple, and green chips all generally score things at the end of the round. So they don't help you as you're placing them down, but they can trigger powerful abilities at the end. For instance, this black moth head will get you a drop movement. If you have more black chips than anyone else, you'll also get a ruby. This moving the droplet can be huge, as we showed you, as it lets you start later on the track. The purple chip are generally just point generators. And lastly, the green chips will get you rubies if they're the last or second to last chip to be played. And if you're lucky enough to play them as both the last and second to last, you would get two rubies. These rubies will buy game effects. And red is usually your combo chip. In this instance, they react to pumpkins. The more pumpkins you have down before you place a red chip, the further your red chip moves. The last little bit we'll get into here is the fortune teller deck. At the start of every round, you reveal a card and everyone gets this benefit. The card I pulled lets every player choose a free four chip. Huge. You could take one of these or there's a four blue. And normally this would cost you quite a bit of in-game gold. That would cost 19, this would cost 16. You get that for free, everyone gets the same benefit. But these fortune teller cards can really change the game flow from round to round. There's nine rounds, so you're gonna see a number of them. Finally, we'll show you the score track for Quacks of Quedlinburg and explain how it works. The display here shows you a lot of crucial information, a lot of good reminders for how the game flows. First, we have this torch icon that explains the rounds. This will track the rounds and tell you when you need to add something to the game. In round two, you add the yellow chips. Round three, you add the purple chips. In round six, you add another white chip, a single white chip to everyone's bag, making it more likely everyone's gonna explode. And then in round nine, you do the final calculations for scoring. And this is just a reminder that the ingredient money, that round can be used to buy points and the rubies, you can spend them if they're unused and get points as well. If you heard us mention rat tails earlier in the video, this is the catch up mechanism for players that are trailing. If we look at the scoreboard as it is now, you'll see that there are three rat tails that exist between the yellow and the blue player. 
This will let the yellow player put the rat tail marker three spaces ahead of their droplet, giving them a chance to start further down the track and catch up. Finally, we have a detailed indication here of how the round resolves. The first part up, you'll see this die cube. The player that made it the furthest around the track and did not explode gets to roll the die. If there's a tie, two players can roll together. That would be a free pumpkin for my bag. There's lots of other stuff on the die. There's a victory point that lets you move your droplet. The die is all good news, so you definitely want to try to get it. From there, you'll see that the black, green, and purple chips resolve. You'll look on your track and you'll see your scoring space, which again is in front of where you ended up. If there's a ruby depicted, you get the ruby. And then if you did not explode, you get to score both the victory points and get the gold to buy new ingredients. If you exploded, you have to choose between the two. You can only pick if you want the victory points or if you want the ingredient money. And finally, if you want to, and you should, you can spend rubies to move your droplet or refill your neutralizer potion. So now that we've gone through the quacks of Quedlinburg, we're going to come back and we'll tell you what we think of the game. So now that you've seen how Quacks of Quedlinburg plays, we want to give you our final thoughts on it here. Um, spoiler alert, if you couldn't tell from the top of the video, we're both big fans of this game. I love this game. And neither of us would have any problem probably adding it to our game collection. Not at all. <laughs> so in breaking down how this game, or how we would score this game in our review, we're going to look at a number of factors. So first up, we'll talk about components. Um, the components of this game are amazing. You have good quality cardstock for your player boards, for your chips. Um, it comes with good stock for the cards. They're easily shuffled, they slide well, um, they have a good hand feel, and then at the same time, each individual player gets a polyester drawstring bag that they get to put those chips into. Um, I've got to give it an A plus for that one. I really like the graphic design and the iconography that they present. Once you learn the symbols in the game, it's easy to read what you need to do from your player board. It's easy to read the tablets for the, the potions and the ingredients. And you can just look around the board and see where everyone's at. Like if their nullifier potion's been used or not, there's a nice playing sign. The game visually presents very well and it's just easy to decipher wherever you look. So the next thing we'll talk about is the fun factor. Um, I, I have a great time with this game. Yeah, there's a very addictive hook in the gameplay loop, and that's where if you're going to push your luck and keep going, or you have to play it safe and pull back. If you're in the lead, you might be playing a little more conservatively. If you're chasing from behind, you're going nuts and pulling and pulling and pulling and, and really riding that fine line of where you might explode. I think the only thing that would make this game any more fun for me would be for that uh, cartoonish soot in the face and your hair is blown back moment every time your pot explodes. That sounds like a do-it-yourself add-on that you might have to work on. <laughs> Next we'll talk about the decision space in this game. And in this game you really have two different phases where you have to make important decisions. The first one is in the marketplace. What ingredients are you going to buy? What strategy are you pursuing to get to the victory condition in this game? Are you chasing combos that might trigger into stuff and get you more chips or more points? Or are you just focused on engine building to get these chips that may get you to a better position where you can start putting down chips that make points? Or are you just buying a chip that looks fun? A little bit of all of that. So <laughs> the thing we'll point out is that we've played this pretty heavily during our review period and we never saw a clear strategy dominate. And I've taken steps towards trying to figure that out. I've looked at my opponents and I've looked at my own uh, chip bags when we were done trying to weigh out whether or not there is a good combo. And I haven't been able to find one yet. It's all up in the air. And that's where the luck stuff comes in. This game has luck. If you don't like games that are based purely on luck, if you think the, the gods are conspiring against you, you have to understand that this game is heavily based on luck. There's a few mitigating factors. There's certain chips you can buy that clean up mistakes. You have your nullifier potion. So there's ways to lower the amount of luck and more guarantee a certain outcome. But you're drawing blindly from a bag. You're pushing your luck of whether or not to go forward. Luck's a big part of the game. And I would argue it's part of the fun. That's the yes. hook, is you're gonna see your friends explode. <laughs> and, and you hope that you don't. <laughs> and you will explode. I mean, if we can't stress that enough, there's a lot of exploding in this game. It's all fun and there's no major setback. So it, it lets you ride that line a little more freely and that you can push it and you're not going to 
mess up on turn two and be faithfully behind for the rest of the game with no hope of catching up. And that's one of the reasons I enjoy this game. Yeah. So those are the major factors. Uh, we both would give this game a high recommend. As far as any negatives about this game, I struggle to think of anything, and this is just a nitpick. But some of the language between the cards uh, is not laid out in the same way, so we were assuming for a while, because many of the cards say to ignore white chips and applying their effects. We found one that lets you skip stuff and jump ahead, but it, it, it also triggered after the white chips, and we had just missed that because we were used to reading the way it was written on other cards. That's an extreme nitpick. This game is great, and I, I really have no negatives. I don't have any at all. So, here's the good news. If you like Quacks of Quedlinburg, there is already an expansion available. The Herb Witches gets you a fifth player board, gets you a new ingredient called Loco Weed, it gets you the Herb Witches themselves, who are three new characters, and you get three versions of each one, so you get nine total cards, and they all offer powerful single-use abilities throughout the game. One of them canceling all the bad stuff from an explosion, which would let you play pretty freely on one turn and not worry about it. Other ones reduce the cost of the droplet, um, letting you jump ahead quite a bit if you save up for a round. And they give you new uh, tablets and spell books for all the ingredients in the core game, adding even more replayability to the core. It doesn't take anything away from the game, and any time that you have an expansion, that's one of the things that I seriously look for. And it doesn't add time to the game. That's correct, because all the players are doing simultaneous actions, so a fifth player does not make the game any longer. Uh, the back of the box, I think, says this plays in 45 minutes. I think that's accurate. I think from all of our game groups, we were between there and an hour from learning, and then once you've got it down, this game plays in 45 minutes. Yes, and in fact, North Stars tells you that also um, 45 minutes is on the expansion as well, so they're telling yeah. you that it doesn't add to that time factor. So, not an essential expansion. If you like the game, this gives you more of the game. I have no problem recommending it, but don't feel like you have to pick this up. But it's a good purchase if you enjoy the base game. It is a great addition to Quacks. So, thank you for watching. We definitely give Quacks our highest recommendation. We are Roller Die. We're part of the Pod 6 network. Make sure you like and subscribe if you like this comment, and hit that notification bell so you find out all of our newest videos. Keep in mind, too, we're heading into convention season here this summer. We will be at Origins. We will be at Gen Con. Look out for us as we'll be filming videos.